We'll just leave that there because the Treasurer Joe Hockey and the Finance Minister Matthias Cormann just stepped up for a media conference in Perth. The budget. And the fact is that the Australian people know that if we do not take strong and decisive action to fix the problems that we inherited in the budget, uh, then the costs associated with a repair job in the future will be far greater. Uh, and uh, clearly, in dialogue that I had yesterday and uh, this morning on morning radio as well uh, with people, it is clear people understand uh, that something needs to be done. Uh, the only people that think the status quo uh, will fix the budget are the Australian Labor Party. And they are still deluding themselves to believe that if nothing is done, the budget will repair. Well, as Dr Parkinson uh, said in April, you would need to have five and a quarter per cent real growth each year to bring the budget back to surplus if nothing is done. Now, that is patently a quite unbelievable number, given that we are currently at below trend of around three to three and a quarter per cent. Uh, five and a quarter per cent is completely unreasonable, which effectively proves uh, that the Labor option of do nothing is not an option. So I now call on Mr Shorten in the upcoming two weeks of Parliament to take a more mature approach uh, to the budget mess that he created, that the Labor Party created, but this generation of members of Parliament need to fix. I am calling on Mr Shorten uh, and the Greens and the Independents to recognise that the budget must be fixed, and if they have better ideas, they can put them on the table. So far, we've heard a whole lot of guff from the Labor Party. They said they wouldn't be giving $8.8 billion to the Reserve Bank. Well, the money's gone. The Reserve Bank is now paying dividends back to the government. If they say they're going to strip $8.8 billion in the future out of the Reserve Bank, that is a very, very significant announcement. Uh, if the Labor Party think uh, that reversing our commitment to the paid parental leave scheme will save them money. They are wrong, uh, because the paid parental leave scheme is a fully funded scheme, a standalone scheme. So the Labor Party uh, now is opposing nearly $40 billion of savings over the next four years. Uh, in addition, they are defending the failure of the carbon tax and the mining tax, which still has a punitive effect on the economy and certainly uh, it doesn't help the budget. So I would say now is the time, as we approach a week of parliament, two weeks of parliament, for the Labor Party to come clean about what they're proposing as part of the budget fix. And I hand over to you, uh, the Minister uh, of Finance. Th thank you, Treasurer. Uh, we are working uh, hard to build a stronger uh, economy uh, here in Western Australia and nationally, uh, and to repair the budget mess that we've inherited from Labor. Uh, Labor is opposing, opposing both our efforts to build a stronger economy and our efforts uh, to repair the budget. Uh, Labor is opposing uh, our plans to scrap the carbon tax, to scrap the mining tax, uh, both uh, initiatives that will strengthen economic growth, in particular here uh, in the great state of Western Australia, but will have uh, significant flow-on consequences and significant beneficial effects uh, nationally. And stronger growth, of course, uh, leads to increase the opportunity for everyone to get ahead, but also to increase revenue for government. So Labor doesn't want to do anything that helps lift government revenue. They don't want to do anything to help reduce uh, government expenditure, which is uh, highly uh, reckless, highly irresponsible, and shows a uh, dangerous indifference by Labor uh, to future uh, opportunities uh, across Australia. Uh, and then, of course, uh, we are uh, investing uh, in uh, the infrastructure of the 21st century. We are investing in productivity enhancing infrastructure, including here in Western Australia, uh, through the uh, $1.6 billion uh, investment all up, including a $925 million federal government investment uh, in the Perth Freight Link. And today uh, I read in the newspaper that Labor is opposed to that too. Uh, so we've got uh, a Labor Party which is opposed to anything uh, that helps build a stronger economy, which helps uh, create opportunity uh, for everyone to get ahead and which will help. Uh, lift government revenue into the future, and Labor is opposed to uh, everything uh, when it comes to uh, making sure that government lives within its means to make sure that our spending uh, growth trajectory is more sustainable into the future. Uh, the $40 billion in uh, savings that Labor is now opposing or saying that they will oppose includes $5 billion of savings 
that Labor themselves initiated, that Labor themselves banked uh, in their last budget, that Labor was too lazy uh, to legislate uh, in the Parliament. They just banked the money uh, in the budget, but never actually did the hard yards to legislate uh, those savings. And now uh, that we are uh, doing the hard yards, uh, making sure uh, that the budget uh, is uh, repaired over time, uh, Labor is standing in our way. Uh, and you know, we are uh, here today calling on Labor to get out of the way, uh, to uh, support uh, the important efforts to build a stronger economy where everyone uh, can get ahead uh, and to support uh, the efforts to ensure uh, that government uh, spending uh, is more sustainable into the future. Which key aspects of your budget do you realistically think that you will be able to get through before the changeover? Well, uh, look, I, I'm not going to start passing comment on the passage of legislation. I'd just say that uh, it is now time for Bill Shorten to become a responsible leader of the opposition uh, and uh, start showing some restraint instead of being all complaint. He is just chief whinger of the, uh, of the complaints desk and frankly as leader of the opposition and as someone helped, who helped to create the mess, he should be taking some responsibility to fix it. The, bu the, budget, the budget that we've uh, put forward and the budget that uh, we have delivered uh, in the parliament and that we will seek to legislate through the parliament is the budget that Australia needs. Uh, and uh, as the Treasurer has said, Bill Shorten needs to start taking responsibility uh, for the mess that he uh, and his team have created uh, in government and he has to start facing up uh, to uh, the solutions that are required. And if he doesn't like our solution, he should start telling the Australian people how he proposes uh, to fix the mess that Labor left behind. But how is his strategy any different to the strategy that you adopted when you were in opposition? Well, uh, it's very different because, for example, in Tony Abbott's last budget and reply speech as Leader of the Opposition. He laid down $5 billion a year of savings, including the abolition of the school kids bonus. So we were very upfront. And when there were changes being made in the welfare space, uh, we actually supported their passage through the parliament. So there is a lot of selective memory going on. There's quite a bit of amnesia. Uh, Bill Shorten has got to stop being the nation's chief whinger and start focusing on the mess that he created and he's actually making it difficult for us to clean up. But the negative reaction to the budget and um, exemplified by the negative polls around the budget, does that demonstrate that the Australian people don't have the appetite to make the sacrifices that you say are necessary to fix the budget up? Look, uh, Australians know that the mess needs to be cleaned up. Then why do they Australians know that. Uh, and, and we are not in the business of focusing on opinion polls, we are in the business of focusing on the right policies to fix the mess. And th this is an important point. I mean, uh, this is a marathon and not a sprint. Uh, we are taking responsibility to put Australia on a stronger foundation uh, for the future again, to fix the budget mess that we've inherited. Uh, people were never going to be uh, universally happy about uh, slower growth in benefit payments or uh, temporary tax increases and the like. Uh, people uh, will, over time, uh, we believe, accept that the decisions that we have made uh, are the right decisions for our country's future. But this is not something that is going to be judged by the first opinion poll uh, after, one week after the budget. This is going to be something that is going to be judged after uh, people have had some time to see uh, the implications, the impact of the decisions that we've made and how they are strengthening our country moving forward. Uh, no, because I think it was the New York Post that praised it as a, a magnificent budget yeah. and an illustration of what government's got to do around the world to prevent going down the path of austerity measures. So you have one editorial from one newspaper, I'll have another editorial from another newspaper. What matters is the policy. The Federation White Paper, what um, realistic chance do you think that there is that Western Australia can get a better deal on the GST, and particularly its distribution coming out of that process? Yeah, look, I've... We will see as we go down that path, but we recognise that uh, Western Australia does has, have a legitimate concern about falling proportion of GST uh, coming to this state. Okay? But 
Sorry. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, well, let's see how the white paper goes. Uh, you're asking me to comment on something that hasn't been drafted. Yes. Yes, no, no. But we, we, we are the party that is absolutely and totally committed to scrapping the mining tax, Absolutely. which is uh, good for Western Australia, which is good for uh, the economy and for jobs in Western Australia. The Labor Party uh, is the party that has uh, come up with a tax uh, which hit a very important industry for Western Australia very hard, which created uncertainty, which has caused jobs, which has uh, lessened the level of investment into an important industry, which hasn't raised any meaningful revenue. And the, the little in revenue that it has raised, we have started to refund because on uh, reflection it turns out that the mining companies that paid initially didn't actually have to pay what they thought they had to pay. So we've got a tax here which was uh, bad for the economy, bad for jobs, bad for investment, bad for Western Australia, which doesn't raise any meaningful revenue when the Labor Party in government had already spent all of the money they thought it would raise and more into the future. No wonder uh, that we've inherited such a mess. I mean, that was one of the real uh, Wayne Swan incompetence specials, uh, the mining tax. I mean, who, ca who can come up with a tax that leaves the budget worse off as well as leaving the economy worse off? I mean, only Labor can be so stupid to come up with a tax that is so bad and then stand in our way as we try to get rid of it. I mean, it is unbelievable. And I agree.